Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ. Thanks for taking this time out of your day to watch this video. If you're not a current member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the like button because you're really gonna like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. It's official. Americans are beginning to panic over the coronavirus pandemic. Over the past couple of weeks, there are many companies that have either completely closed their doors or they have sent their employees home so that they can work from home. And that's for the companies that actually have the ability to do so. There are many companies and businesses where their actual business doesn't even allow for their employees to be able to work from home. There are many businesses that are canceling their meetings, canceling any events that they have planned. If you think about different companies or business types where uh, people congregating in big numbers is basically their business, like the NBA, the NHL, different concert venues, all of these places have to close their doors in order to help reduce the spread of the coronavirus. And essential businesses like grocery stores and restaurants, many of these are even closing as well, or they're reducing their hours or the types of interactions that you can have. So for instance, with restaurants, instead of being able to eat inside, they may only allow takeout or delivery orders, depending on which restaurant. And if they don't already have that option, they're either starting that process, whether it's partnering with companies like Uber Eats or DoorDash, or if they don't have any delivery partners, some of them are just completely shutting down. And now that the president has announced a national emergency, which began on Friday the 13th, no less, there's even more panic that's going on within the US. Especially since many people aren't able to work and they're wondering how long is this gonna go on? When will I be able to return to work? Will I be able to return to work if the business that I was working for, maybe they're not even in business anymore. So this is creating a lot of FUD, which stands for, that's F-U-D, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And that has definitely begun to rise with all of the restrictions and the suggestions that the president and many of the local governors or senators in your area or city councils, all the people that are making the decisions on how different cities and states should act in the public, those decisions are making a big change on how we interact within our daily lives. So this isn't only a health problem, it is also a financial problem. And so that's what I'll talk about today in this video. And specifically in this video, I'll talk about the financial impacts of panic buying when people are panicking in a situation like what we're currently in. So first I'll talk about the producers or the sellers of products. These companies, depending on what industry they're in, if you're able to buy anything at all, the things that you're gonna buy the most are your essential needs. So things like toilet paper, maybe medicine, bottled water, things of that nature, people are buying them in big numbers. And so because you're buying a lot more than you normally would during this time period, the companies that sell these products, they can't even keep them on the shelves long enough for all the people that are trying to buy them. So this makes a big effect on their supply chain. They're not used to this many people trying to buy all of the same products within this short period of time and so they may run out in just a few hours or even just a few minutes of the time that their store opens and don't even try to buy them online because more than likely it's out of stock online as well and one of the bigger issues dealing with supply is that many of the companies may have used products that were either produced in china or for instance if let's say there's a soup that goes in a specific type of plastic bag and if that plastic bag is only made in china then just putting an item that they may have the product for they may not even have the packaging that they would normally use to put that product in because this virus as far as we know began in china and so there are small things like that that you may not even think about on the producer or on the seller side that has created a reduction in the amount of products that a store can sell or that they can even get to their stores in the first place. But with the increased buying, even if they had the products available to ship, it may take longer for them to get the products because the amount of sales that they're currently making on specific items that are essentials, it's a lot higher volume than what they would normally have. And so next on the consumer side, when people are panic buying, that means that there are less products on the shelf for you to buy. And when people panic buy, they usually buy more than they realistically need. So consumers may be buying more than they realistically need just out of fear that the product may not be available or that they need to protect themselves by buying specific uh, protective equipment or medicine. And because of that fear, even other people who may 
normally they wouldn't panic buy, but because when they go to the store with their normal shopping, they may see that an item is out of stock. And so the next time it's available, maybe they start to hoard products as well because they know that so many other people are going out and buying more than they actually need to buy. And so I'll use myself as an example. On Friday the 13th when they made the announcement that this was officially a national emergency, on my lunch break I decided to go to Costco and just buy the things that I was normally going to buy anyway that weekend, but I was just going to do it on my lunch break instead of waiting for either after work or on the weekend when there are a lot more shoppers in the store. And so while I was in the parking lot, I'm waiting on someone to leave so that I can park and I see that they have two big boxes of emergency. And because this is Costco, these are like probably 20 or 40 packs of emergency and they're buying two of them. And that was the thing that stood out the most out of their shopping cart. Typically you wouldn't see someone buying two large packs of emergency at Costco. Maybe you would buy one for your family, but typically you're not going to buy two. And so just in the parking lot, I could tell that either this item is on sale and so they're trying to take advantage of the sale or they're worried about the national emergency that was just announced and the chances that maybe they could get the coronavirus and buying more emergency would help them fend off this virus. And so once I got in the store, I did see that it was actually on sale, but there are a lot more people buying emergency because of the current state of the coronavirus impact. And so while I was only going to the store to buy some fish, some almond milk, and some bottled water, I ended up buying emergency myself. I only bought one, but that was an item that I bought just rationally because I saw that as something that many people were going to start buying. And so I should get it now while I'm at the store anyway, instead of waiting until I actually need to buy it. Now there are some people that will end up buying loads of one product just because they see an opportunity to sell that product, whether it's selling it on Amazon, uh, selling it on eBay, or maybe another e-commerce website, or maybe even just buying it for their friends or family who may not be able to get to the store as quick as they were able to. And I don't know if maybe you saw in the news, but there was actually a kid in school somewhere in the United Kingdom where they bought hand sanitizer and they were actually charging per squirt for the kids at his school. And so that was really cool. It was very interesting, you know, seeing I probably would have been that type of kid when I was in school back in the day. But at the same time, charging someone for one squirt of sanitizer to some people, they would see that as taking advantage of the current situation. But personally, I see that as a kid who maybe in the future, they're probably going to be an entrepreneur or they're going to sell some product. So that's something that I don't think he probably should have gotten in trouble for at his school, but he was suspended for doing that. But no matter what your reasoning is behind the panic buying, there's also the rational reasoning behind if you see that a lot of people are panic buying any specific product and you know you may need that product in the future, you may go out and buy that product as well just to make sure that the people that are panicking and fearing aren't buying up all the items and then there's nothing left for you to buy. But luckily for our family, because we typically shop at Costco anyway, and then we take advantage of any sales when they occur, we already had most of the essential things we needed. So we really didn't need to stock up on any toilet paper or soap or Clorox wipes. Many of those things we already had in bulk from previous sales at Costco. But now getting into the investor side of what happens when a panic is occurring. And typically with a panic selling, which is the opposite of what people do with panic buying, investors typically start to sell specific companies and specific stocks. Uncertainty is a thing that investors don't really like because investors are thinking about what's going to happen in the future and that's how they base the companies that they put their money in based on what they see happening in the future. If they see something that's either a bleak future or they're not unsure what's going to happen in the future, they usually want to get out of the industries that they believe will be affected by what they see happening in the future. So people will start selling companies like airlines or hotels, cruise lines, companies like that that they think will be affected by the coronavirus because people aren't traveling as much, people aren't going into hotels. They're reducing their contact with the outside world in order to reduce the chances of contracting the coronavirus. And then what these investors do is that they then transfer that money into other companies. So the businesses where people are going out and panic buying, so maybe Costco and Walmart or Clorox because people are buying Clorox wipes, these types of businesses is where they now transfer their money to 
as a safer place to hold their investment. And so the selling of those other businesses creates a buying opportunity long-term, if you're a long-term investor. The only question is, when is the right point to actually get into those businesses where there's been a major sell-off? And so even if you're not investing in an individual company, because those individual companies are part of indexes, so like the total stock market index fund or the S&P 500, that's gonna affect the price of those indexes as well. And so you see as a total overall market with the S&P 500, at the time of this recording, the S&P 500 is down 34% from the highs earlier this year. And so if you're an investor of index funds, this is also a great time to buy. But if you're already on a normal buying schedule where you're buying every pay period or maybe once per month, just go with your normal schedule. Don't make any changes. But if you think we are now at the bottom or maybe we're close to the bottom because 50% is about the drop that we had in 2008, 2009 during that recession. And so maybe you think it could go down to 50% or maybe 30% will be the lowest that it goes. Whatever you're thinking right now is a great time to buy when you compare it to the highs that we were at previously. And the fact that we've pretty much lost all of the gains since the beginning of 2017. And so when you're investing, you see this panic selling as a discount in the stocks that you may have already been in, or maybe a stock that you've wanted to get into, but the price was too high for what you wanted to buy it at. So no matter whether you are panic buying or panic selling, with both instances, you wanna take some time out and breathe and just think about what you're doing. Because when you're panic buying, you're spending money that you normally wouldn't have spent, or you're putting all of the money that you would have spent over maybe a two or three month period, and you're putting it in a one week period. And so you have to think about the impact that could have on your current bills, the impact that could have on the money that you could have been investing, and always take all of that information into account before you go out and buy things that you may not really need at the moment. Because buying 10 cases of toilet paper, you're probably not actually gonna use that amount even within the next year. And so unless you plan on selling that, then there's really no point in having that much toilet paper. You're not gonna use the bathroom that much, I would hope. So in the comments, just think about, has panic buying ever caused you to miss out on paying a bill or maybe missed out on an investment opportunity because you've already used your money buying something that now you can't use or you can't easily sell to get your money back? Also in your area, just make a comment about what are the common items that people have been panic buying in your area and maybe what you may need to borrow or maybe share with a friend or a family member to make sure that we all have what we need during this time. And also just leave a comment on the reasoning behind any panic purchases that you have made that you may think may be out of the ordinary from what you've seen from other people that are panic buying and just talk about your reasoning behind why you bought those products. All right, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you taking this time out of your day. If you're not a current member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you really like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.